Hi, I'm Scott Allen Miller. Today on Sam IT, I'm going to answer one of those giant career questions that comes up all the time or is just always confused, and that is what is a systems administrator? Also known as a system admin or a sysadmin or a system operator. They've had a lot of titles over the years. A systems administrator or SA, it is the one field within IT that is allowed to use the initials SA. That's what SA stands for in standard career terminology. Is a very specific specialization and focus within the IT realm. Both the systems and the admin portions of systems administrator are extremely specific and mean something that is not at all broad. It is unfortunately the career title most often applied to other things that are anything but systems administration. There is a uh, a certain stigma with certain roles within IT, often the generalist, and systems administrators are the highest paid, generally most advanced role within the normal broad sets of IT disciplines, and so there's a strong desire to be associated with them even if it's not a role that you're doing, and so people in roles that are as far from systems administration as possible often uh, gravitate towards trying to call themselves that as much as possible because it sounds good, unfortunately. So this has made systems administrators have a problem that their titles are both the best and often the worst in IT. Of course, titles like IT manager and director are actually better and worse. Nothing is more dynamic than that, and we'll cover that in a different talk. But systems administrators, let's break down what this means. First, admin versus engineer. We'll have other talks on this, but really quickly, engineers design systems. So you don't need very many engineers in your organization and they're not tied to production. Administrators run live production systems. So administrators, while they may spend less time designing systems, they probably have input to the engineers, but a, a true systems administrator is about operations. They run the live systems. In enterprises, admins and, and uh, engineers are separate groups, different people, because their jobs are so different. Putting them together is extremely problematic. Even in mid-sized companies, having one person do both engineering and administration duties means that they are focused on completely different conflicting tasks, and it's very hard to make them good at either. Not because they're not skilled at either, and not because the same person can't be both an engineer or an administrator. It's that as a current job, not as a career, but as a job, being both an admin and having to deal with operations and being an engineer and having to deal with planning aren't things that you can do at the same time without burning out. One requires you to be highly efficient and work flexible hours, uh, and the other requires you to be uh, extremely available and work very specific hours. They just don't overlap well. You'd have to be superhuman and work 180 hours a week to have any real hope of being actually good at both. So everything suffers, that's why we don't mix them together. But technically, loads and loads of people in small businesses do wear both hats, and that's one of the reasons that people get confused. They simply see all the work as being systems, they forget that admin and engineer are actually two different roles that they're just doing both of. One of the many reasons that SMB are always generalist is because their admin and engineering roles are always smashed together, they're never kept discreet. But in the enterprise, it's very well known that they have to be discreet because they are so incredibly different. That does not imply in any way whatsoever that engineering is senior to administration. In fact, it should really always be the other way around because administration is the operations. They're the ones who matter. Engineers can be efficient, inefficient, good, bad, and it doesn't really impact the business in the same way. But if your administrator is bad, it can take the smallest little thing and your administrator may be the, the difference between your company making it and not making it. There's very little you can do to mitigate a bad administrator and very little that isn't worth paying to a good one. So administration is about running the environment, the actual stuff that keeps your business running. Administrators are broad terms, so we have network admins and system admins and database admins, there are admins everywhere, just like there are engineers. Now, systems, what does this refer to? A lot of people like to try to claim that systems refers to things in some really general sense, and that, well, networks are systems, and databases are systems, and applications are systems, and this is simply wrong. Systems is an extremely clear uh, reference to operating systems. These are the things that systems administrators and system engineers work on, the operating systems. So specialties within systems administration include Windows, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, SUSE Linux, Ubuntu Linux, uh, FreeBSD, Solaris, AIX, HPUX, MacOS even. 
these are the things you focus on. There aren't loads and loads of other things within systems administration. It is simply the operating system. Now, you may have a focus on um, large-scale uh, clustering within those spaces, or high performance, or real-time systems, or uh, you know, web platforms and horizontally scalable systems. You can have specializations, but what you do as a systems administrator is manage the operating systems, and this is the biggest role. It's also one of the most blind roles. Uh, you tend to have a lot of visibility into your platform teams who do your hypervisors. You tend to have a lot of visibility into your storage teams because people know that they have storage. You tend to have a lot of visibility into your application teams and your database teams because the end users probably interact with them. Systems administrators sit in the middle and have basically no reason to ever interact with end users and are completely hidden as just that piece in the middle that glues everyone together. But they are the ones who talk to the application admins and the database admins and the storage admins and the network admins and get everything together because the operating systems are kind of the glue of everything. They're also where the most work happens. Uh, you have a tremendous amount of tuning and monitoring and logging and uh, configuration and installations and things like that that happen at the systems layer. So this is the role where we tend to see the, the vast majority of the work that goes on in an environment and in many cases the highest amount of risk. This is the team that probably has the most pressure on it to keep things working and well organized. This is also the role where DevOps typically happens. Now, uh, DevOps is a terrible term and a lot of people use it in different ways and it doesn't really mean anything very specific other than it's kind of often meant to convey a certain way of doing systems administration except so the ops part of dev is just another term for administration, right? So you, you don't do DevOps engineering, except you kind of do. So that's confusing because you could be a dev eng. And it's, you're not actually being a developer, you're just using techniques taken from development. So that's confusing. So it's really just a horrible term. And no one quite agrees on exactly what qualifies someone as DevOps versus not DevOps. But in the generally accepted senses, DevOps primarily applies to systems administration and is just one way of doing it. Um, also of note, standard uh, full-time systems admins typically range on the incredibly low end of having about 15 to 20 uh, server instances. So we call them servers, but this is operating system instances assigned to them for management. And on the high end, within the snowflake realm, that means individual machines that are not all the same, about 600. This is the, the super high end where you're expecting large six-figure salaries, and on the low end, you would expect you know junior and entry-level people or SMBs where you're just getting 15 or 20. Um, although there are some enterprise shops that only get up to like 30 uh, operating systems per admin. Of course, if you're on like Windows versus Linux, you're going to have different ratios based on how simple they are uh, to manage and how much work they take. So you often get um, you know five to ten. Uh, times more density out of Linux admins than you do out of Windows admins just because of the efficiencies of the environment, um, but also for other reasons that we can dig into in another video. Uh, in the DevOps world, these numbers become completely different because of the way you manage, and you might expect um, thousands or tens of thousands of servers per admin instead of just scores or hundreds, uh, but that's because they're not snowflakes. We can talk about snowflakes versus DevOps identical machines in another video. Uh, but the thing that I want to get across is how important it is that system admin be used as an honest term. Do not use it to apply to just anything you think is okay. Uh, don't, um, don't think that SMBs ever have these people. They don't. A systems admin the, the term, any specialty term, assumes that you spend all of your time or the essentially all of your time doing that task. If someone says they're a doctor, we don't expect them to be a lawyer 80% of the time and only a doctor 20%. Yeah, legally, they might be a doctor, and that's a little bit different because they have to be certified. But if you're an auto mechanic, you don't expect someone to say, I'm an auto mechanic, that's what I do, when you say, what's your job, and then find out that they're actually uh, an, you know, a pilot and they just work on cars on the side or something. But that's how systems admin is often used. People in SMBs may do system admin and engineering tasks for something between zero and 5% of their total time, but use that as their label instead of other things that they do that they do 95 to 100% of the time. That's how badly this is often used. It's, it's just a title that people desire, and it's one that is often heard and semi-understood outside of IT, so there's a lot of pressure there to just have a title that somebody understands. 
kind of. Even though it's wrong, they'll understand that it's something and they'll kind of feel it's impressive or something like that. But systems admins work exclusively on operating systems. This is what they do. And in many cases, the things that are included with the operating systems. And sometimes they touch a little bit more. And often operating systems manage their storage. Often operating systems manage their monitoring. Often uh, large components of applications, such as your web server or your database server, may be included as part of your operating system. So it's well within the range of reason to expect that your operating system admin, your system admin, may be uh, also managing the majority of your web servers or database servers or whatever. Uh, that still falls within the system, right? Especially because in many cases, uh, your database or your web server are part of your operating system. They're included as part of that package or tied very, very closely to it. So we give some leniency to those things as being part of the system's world, even though they're not in all cases technically the operating system. But that's, if you're getting into a murky area of what is the operating system versus what is not. So it's pretty acceptable for system admins to be included in that area. Uh, but um, systems admins are not the people configuring switches and routers and are not helping people on the desktop, are not the people configuring applications. Those things are very different and are their own tasks. Network admin is a different role. Desktop admin is a different role. Application admin is a different role. Database admin is a different role. They're all specialists just like systems admin, and uh, but the others don't normally network to some degree, but the others, application, desktop, and uh, database, they no one ever uses those terms to just mean normal people in IT with, with no specialty. That would be really weird and confusing, but so is calling them system admins. Why people think it's okay to just use that, I don't know, but they do. So I hope that this helps you understand why system admin is a very specific and important title and should not be used in other cases. And when you hear it, uh, you will know what someone should be meaning. And it's pretty easy to question them and figure out if that's actually what they meant or if they just made up the term or just repeated something they had heard. Also, it's important to understand that if you put things like system admin on a resume and you weren't a system admin, but you were a generalist or something else, and you then go for a system admin uh, interview, that would be considered lying and would very quickly get you walked out of the interview. That is a standard thing that people hiring system admins know that loads of people, the majority of people, simply lie about that or the company they work for gave them a false title. And it's okay to use your title, this is again another discussion, but it's okay to use your title on a resume as long as you make it clear it was your title and then tell what your job was. But if you simply claim to be a system admin, just because someone gave you that title, that's lying, right? You can't give someone the title of medical doctor even though they were system admin and then actually repeat that you were a medical doctor, but legally they're allowed to give you that title inside the company in most cases. So titles don't, just because a company calls you something doesn't make you that thing. It doesn't even suggest you're that thing in the real world. What you are is one thing, what your title is is unrelated. System admins simply are preyed upon um, in many ways and are leveraged in, in in appropriate ways. Remember to like and subscribe. You'll have questions, I'm sure. Put them below. Uh, you can follow the links. This is something we discuss all the time, um, and system admins appreciate you keeping their titles pure so that they are able to describe what they do easily. If you want to support us, you can do so on Patreon.